What's up ladies and gents, this is Casey Kidd, coming at you with another Destiny video. Now what I want to do right now is I want to show you the entire live stream for the full winter reveal of the Cosmodrome, the new Cosmodrome for the Rise of Iron. So if you forgot the live stream was today, or you missed it, or you were at work, or you watched it and want to watch it again, or you want to watch it again and see if you can find any easter eggs or secrets, by all means have a look. As you can tell already whenever you came into this video, this video is completely unmonetized. It's just up here for those of you that wanted to rewatch it that happened to miss it. There are definitely those people that are on my channel that are in this community that always kind of miss those streams and I can totally understand that. I just wanted to put it out there in case you missed it and you stopped by my channel and you wanted to give it a watch or maybe the next day at work you can go ahead and watch it. Whatever it may be, it's just for you to get all hyped up about the Rise of Iron get your feet wet in the Cosmodrome, get a little taste of those splicers, learn about the Gallowing. <laughs> it's all in here. Anyway, guys and gals, enjoy the stream. Gallowing Sparrow. That's right, my friends. It's real. So those of you who are sounding off in chat, the Gallowing is a real thing, and if you have pre-ordered Rise of Iron to get your Iron Galler horn, it comes with a vehicle. I know you want to see that again. We're going to show you that again in just a moment. That's the ritual, right? You see something cool on the internet? Play it again. Play it again. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself. I'm Deej. I'll be your host for this tour of the Cosmodrome. We're going to tour the Cosmodrome in style aboard our brand new shiny Galler Wing Sparrows, and our guides are going to be Steve Cotton. Hello, world. Good morning. Nice, nice. Nice to be here. Nice to have you here. And uh, if you read the blog and you were expecting Shikai Wang, we have a last minute substitution in the form of Keith Bachman. Hey guys. Glad to have you guys here. We're going to take a look at the Cosmodrome. We're going to take a look at how it's changed. We're going to see how an environment that you know, that you have fought to protect, has become different and strange over the passage of time and under the threat of a brand new enemy. But first, you want to see that again, right? Uh, yeah. Let's roll that Gallerwing trailer one more time. Destiny Rise of Iron and get the Iron Gallahorn and Iron Gallowing Sparrow. <laughs> I've seen that at least a dozen, <laughs> dozen yeah. times now. Uh, it makes me smile every single time. Huge shout out and <clears throat> big thanks to uh, our friends upstairs in the fish tank who put together uh, a, a very fun tongue in cheek tribute to a vehicle that is its own living tribute to one of the most iconic weapons in the Destiny arsenal. So uh, another programming note, the Iron Galler Wing Sparrow is yours if you pre-order Rise of Iron. Comes with the actual rocket launcher that it was designed to celebrate. Uh, this is select retailers and this is uh, your console store. So PS4, Xbox One, those of you on Xbox One have been asking us when do you get to pre-order Rise of Iron through your console. Uh, the answer is soon. Uh, we will make that available with Plenty of time for you to make your pre-order real through your box and uh, take advantage of all of the incentives that we have queued up for uh, people who will rush into the Cosmodrome on day one of Rise of Iron. When? You know. I know. Tell them. You know. You know. Tell them. When does it roll in? September? September. Sometime in September. September, September 20th? 20th? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds good to me. So uh, before we actually go into the Cosmodrome, I want to talk about uh, the art uh, behind this new vehicle. And uh, this is a, a great group of guys to talk to us about that. So uh, let me introduce you to our audience and uh, have you tell them. We're going we're gonna to give you a little bit of cred so they understand why you're sitting in the hot seat. All right. So Steve Cotton, uh, what would you say you do here? Hey, guys. Uh, I am the world design lead on Rise of Iron. 
I work with a team of world artists and level designers that craft the, the uh, destinations and places you get, we get to go. I uh, also work with the designers to craft the missions that are going to help tell the story of the Iron Lord. So, uh, Ryan Parody and his team do a lot of the work on the on the back end, work doing the uh, crafting the experiences after you get to play the campaign. So, so it's not just building the places that we're going to explore, but yeah. it's also creating the action and the adventure yeah, that happens both. when we get there. Yep. So you'd mentioned Ryan Parody. Uh, we had the chance to uh, meet Ryan and hear from him about the things that he does at Bungie on one of the streams right before the April update. And that's also when we met Keith Bachman. So for those who didn't uh, watch those streams, uh, tell our audience today what you do at Bungie. Uh, I'm the art lead for live. So I have the privilege of working with a bunch of talented artists and designers. And for this release, I worked on the armor, the weapons, the sparrows, the ships, the ghosts, the effects, the UI. Fantastic. So the Gallerwing uh, Sparrow is something you know a little bit about. Uh, I know a lot about that. Well, I'm glad you're here. Uh, when did you find out you were going to be on this stream? <clears throat> uh, in the car on the way to work uh, <laughs> about 25 minutes ago. So I have no idea what he's going to say about any of this. This is, uh, this is hot off the presses and uh, that's showbiz. So we're going we're gonna <laughs> to do this live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have no idea what's going to happen right now. Uh, so uh, when you say the live team, uh, the live team is the group here at Bungie that, that keeps the living social world of destiny alive with fresh things to do, mm -hmm. new places to go, mm -hmm. uh, new vehicles to drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> this is uh, yeah. one of the original concepts for the uh, Galler Wing trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, when we started creating uh, Destiny Rise of Iron, uh, what was the thought process of creating a vehicle like this? Well, so it's, it's the Gallahorn, and we were already working on the Iron Gallahorn. Yeah. And then it was like, we we're going to the sparrow list, and it was like, oh, oh, well. And then so we started off, and obviously this one's a little bit more Gallahorn than sparrow, but you got to start <laughs> just somewhere. A little. Yeah. And this is this is like a completely normal process. You start you start somewhere, and you just kind of course correct until you get that thing that's just absolutely perfect. So we're going to walk through a few of these. Okay. So this is the same concept that we just saw from the top down. Uh, it doesn't feel like a sparrow. It's a little blocky. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So. What is it in your mind that sort of embodies a sparrow? What words would you use to describe a sparrow to help you arrive at the right design? Well, sparrows are these beautiful, sleek, fast moving things. They need to like, not only do they move fast, but when you see it, you need to feel that essence of speed and elegance and, and I'm like, it's a space motorcycle. It's gotta be gorgeous. <laughs> so this definitely feels like a motorcycle. Uh, definitely speedy, not necessarily it's, elegant. Kind of feels like a, it's, like a big Harley. It feels like a John chopper. Deere. That's the John Deere <laughs> yellow wing right there. No, come on. Was, <laughs> you go a lot of different places, right? But this, this, is like, this is like this beautiful old school sort of motorcycle, not lawnmower. No, this, this is, is a lawnmower. This is a beautiful thing, right? But it still isn't that kind of beautiful, sleek thing that we wanted. But this is something that, you know, over time you collect these things, you never know when you're going to come back and do something beautiful with it. Yeah, sure. There's not okay. enough grass on the Cosmodrome for that guy. <laughs> That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay, so moving away from what Steve Cotton thinks is a lawnmower and what Keith Bachman feels is a chopper, uh, this is something uh, a little bit more familiar to uh, our player base. This is the Sparrow Racing League chassis that uh, came into being last year in December, uh, but we've got definitely some Sparrow design elements on board. Right, so in this one, you, you can see we're exploring the, uh, the shape of the forks and the language of the wings. And also we're starting to incorporate more elements. I mean, the saddlebags, the beautiful buckles from the Gallahorn, the iconography. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got starting to get those beautiful streamlines to really express this freed and elegance. And different interpretations of the Gallahorn art on the vehicle design. In fact, if I click this fast enough, it almost looks like, like your turn signal. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's like this is your directional indicator. Uh, and then there is uh, the final concept for how those wings could have looked on the, what did you call them, the, uh, the, the forks? Yeah. And uh, this is the final concept. This is a lot closer to the geometry that you actually arrived at for the uh, final version, yeah? Right, so this is another exploration, uh, tweaking out the body shape, and then the forks are going much more elegant instead of like straight up speed and, and beauty. This, this is an elegance to the design that really speaks to the motion of the Sparrow and also the design of the wings. And here we have the final concept that we started working with, and we have a lot of incorporated elements. We really feel the, the line and the, the motion through the Sparrow. We have a bunch of uh, stuff that relates exactly back to the Gallahorn, but much larger. So we have a lot of Gallahorn hits. We have the speed and elegance to it. And so it's 
speaking back to the Calhoun, but it's starting to become its own thing. Okay. And uh, this model is available uh, through uh, Eververse Trading Company. And then if you pre-order the game, you get the black and silver iron version. Mm. So that is my understanding of how this will work. We're going to take these for a spin. Uh, I'm going to put down the clicker and pick up right. my controller because we now take you live to the Cosmodrome. And here we are inside the wall, inside old Russia. I know it well. This was the site of one of the first reveals of Destiny back at E3 2013. This is where we first took our community. And uh, you can see that it's a very different place now. And we're going to take a walk through here and we're going to see how the outbreak of the SIVA threat and just the passage of time has changed the world that we know. Hey, how you doing? You guys <laughs> gave me the hunter? We gave you the hunter. You'll be fine. There's plenty of hunters in the audience. You don't want to disparage their class, no, bro. No, not at all. I'm going to take a loving turn around here. We're going to show them this new gear. You got, a, you got a new dead orbit shotgun on your back, okay? Does that make up for it? Is that a little bit better? Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check it out. Oh, nice. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet. And then uh, here we go. Steve Cotton will be our Titan for the day. Hello. All dressed up in his new monarchy glory. So here we go. Take a quick turn once you uh, about face. Nice. Work it. Looking good. Yeah, there you go. All the emotes. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, I, get to be, uh, I get to be the warlock. So... Thankfully, emotes put us in a third-person view. <laughs> Check out my fabulous new robes. <clears throat> so if you're like me and you love the Warlocks, you get some new armor in Rise of Iron. If you earn it, you don't get anything for free in Destiny. You know that. You don't need me <laughs> to tell you that. Uh, so here we are, gentlemen. Uh, you are going to be our guides for this tour of how the Cosmodrome has changed. Uh, at a glance, I can see that the changes are pretty catastrophic. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, the first thing you're going to notice is the Fallen have been up to something. Uh, they're not just trespassing anymore. They're building something. They're, they're ripping apart the wall. Um, we talked about early on, the first thing we wanted to do was make the spaces that you get to go back to feel different. Yeah. Not just look different, but play different. Uh, you want me to jump off here? Yeah, absolutely. And jump in. See, now you can jump down here. So what was once a fall to our ultimate doom is now a nice soft landing. Oh, on a boy. snowy floor. So the we fact that the roof guys. has come off. <laughs> well, that's new. <laughs> that's so poetic. Now, uh, for those of you watching, understand that we are playing in a development environment. Rise of Iron is a work in progress. There's no telling what may happen today, what we may do or see. So this is you getting an opportunity to pull the curtain back. And uh, that was one of our smartphones. That's not a new audio. <laughs> that's not a new audio element to tell us what's happening in the game. So I'll say that for the uh, sound designers on our team. All right, you gentlemen lead the way. Talk to me about what we're seeing. Uh, at a glance, I can see that uh, the Fallen, the Devil Splicers, have uh, clawed at the environment. Oh yeah, they're still working at it too. If you look up, I don't know, can you see one of these shanks? He's still, he's, wel he's welding the, the wall away. Well, he ain't no more. No, well, he, yeah, and they're fun was. to kill. They are fun to kill. <laughs> shanks are always fun to kill. Um, and we're gonna go to the end of the wall. So now we get to, we're able to fight down this, the snowy terrain in here. Uh, and the, the Fallen have also dismantled a lot of the bridges. Uh, they've cut away a lot of stuff. So we're gonna go into a, um, a, familiar, a familiar corridor again. Okay. That's also changed. I'm following. Bachman, you got my six? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, Mike Bilterman is uh, sort of the, the world art lead on the, uh, the content that we're running through right now. Um, and uh, he's done a, an amazing job at, at you know, reinventing the sort of these spaces. So this isn't just a matter of coming in here and dumping snow everywhere. Uh, you've changed the geometry. You've removed walls. You've punched holes yeah, the, in the, the ceiling. Yeah, the fall have been up to some stuff for sure. And those visual cues create that curiosity. The fallen have been up to some stuff. What <laughs> stuff? And uh, the, com the campaign that you guys are creating, the story that you're telling with these new activities in these new worlds, uh, that's going to pay off those curiosities? Um, we, we, uh, it was really important that we, want, we took you to a new place in Rise of Iron. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and new, new, new places to play. So uh, we wanted the player to discover that new place. And the best way to do that was to take them through a familiar place where they got to unlock all this new content. Yeah. So 
Uh, wow, I'm stepping in through this door. We got some, uh, Again, this, is a, yeah. this is a debug build. Yeah, this is a work <laughs> in progress, so you're not meant to see the luminosity here. Uh, this is something that uh, we'll correct before uh, we ship Rise of Iron, but uh, that's what happened when we pull the curtain back, is you get to see what we see when something is in development. Hashtag game dev. Hashtag game dev. Mm -hmm. So we're now going to take our first step outside, and you can see that the environment has become blanketed with snow. Uh, the fallen are vandals, not just in name. They're dismantling. They're dismantling our past. Yeah, when uh, when we talked about telling the story of the Iron Lords, uh, that those the Iron Lords evoked uh, a certain imagery uh, to us. Mm -hmm. uh, one of of warriors from the north, uh, cold, oh wearing winter coats, uh, bat double-edged battle axes. Um, beards, sorry, sorry, Deesh. Beards, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Okay, so without the, Sans beards, uh, we we wanted the environments to uh, to to to, to um, re-evoke those same themes mm -hmm. that the Iron Lords uh, did. Just Jump up here in this relatively that. safe place. All right, I'm hold see, on. Because yeah, I've actually yeah. got some concepts that are uh, kind of a good riff on some of the things that you're talking about. So uh, if we can go back to uh, our deck. Uh, you have uh, this original concept. When we first revealed Rise of Iron, we took a look at this concept. Uh, who created this again? This is Jamie Jones. Jamie Jones. Yeah. This was one of our first visions of Lord Saladin as the hero, uh, his, uh, his, his wolf companions, and uh, the breach in the wall, which we've now explored on our own. And you're talking about the heroes from the Northlands, yeah. sort of the Viking theme. And uh, we move on from that to this concept of the plague lands. <clears throat> so talk to me a little bit about the mood that you're looking to strike here and some of the elements that we can see on the screen. Uh, well, again, the, the idea of the plague lands uh, was that um, this area had been corrupted by something that you, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not, um, not to give too much of the story away, but like obviously you find this place. Uh, we still wanted it to be relatable. We still wanted it to feel like the Cosmodrome, but one that you don't recognize. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, this concept was a little too grim uh, because you want to you want to go to this place and you want to you want to stay there. For that a is while a little too, gloomy right? for our bright, yeah. hopeful future. Absolutely. But, but uh, the, the that large form you see in the background, um, those types of things that, that evoke this emotion of discovery and fantasy, we wanted to keep that. So, but it roots us in the real world. When I see a beached tanker ship like mm -hmm. that. It's obvious to me that I'm on Earth. I'm not exploring right. some snowy wasteland f across the solar system. You know, I'm not on, uh, you know, like a, a frozen Saturn moon. I'm here on Earth, and this is where human society came you know, crushing to a halt. And it's relatable, but it's made strange over time. And even more so now that we've kind of come to think of the Cosmodrome as familiar. And you can see in the trees there those diamond shapes. You know, we see evidence of the SIVA outbreak. But this concept is a little bit more colorful, feels a little bit more like Destiny, and there's a lot more evidence of SIVA in its final form. Right, right. This, this, is, uh, this is actually really close to what we, what we sort of ended up with in, in, the, in the Plague Land. So, um, and, uh, and, it's, and it's pretty clear, SIVA's taken hold, taken over, yeah. over this environment. Yeah. And you're able to add a little bit more color. SIVA, the SIVA stalks are red, yeah. so it, it stands out as a sort of a stark warning against the snow. It's, it's pretty um, hideous and beautiful at the same time. I mean, it feels like a technological spider web, which, you know, as somebody who hates spiders, it definitely kind of sends, sends a shiver up my spine. And then this is not a concept. This is an actual view in game. And uh, this is where we are now. So let's uh, continue our exploration of the space. And uh, I'll get oriented here. And so, yeah, this is uh, th this this space is called the divide in the game. We call it internally. We call it the graveyard. Okay. Um, uh, which is now much more appropriate since it's got the uh, the old devil uh, devil walker that Indeed. you fought many 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 times. Indeed. Um, uh, and this, you know, some backstory for this space is that this was actually uh, the first place that we did an art test early on when we wanted to, um, we knew we wanted to spend a lot of our time on the new, new plague land, mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted to make sure that we could capture this snowy feel over the rest of the, the reprise cosmos sure. spaces. And this was our first test, so 
Um, when we said that destiny would be a dynamic world, a world that would change over time, a world that would react to the things that you do, and now we're really starting to make uh, good on that promise because I can't tell you how many times I've killed that tank and there <laughs> it finally lies dead in its final resting place. I want you guys to join me over here if you could because uh, first of all I need help because <laughs> something's shooting at me and uh, second of all we've got uh, an outbreak of SIVA over here and I'd love for you to uh, come back to me. What? Over here, D. <clears throat> there we go. I got bad guys. Oh, there you go. Okay, so talk to me about this SIVA outbreak, because this, this, these are the red tendrils that we saw in that concept. This looks to be just erupting out of the ground here. Right, so uh, the first thing is that this is, uh, is kind of how we wanted to present this to the player, where the player's discovering SIVA. They're, seeing, they're starting to see hints of it throughout the world, and then they, they kind of find the source. Um, uh, th this is, uh, we'll just say, I don't want to give too much of the story away. This is a key player on Team Evil, all right? Okay. We got, okay. Uh, and uh, one that Saladin might have a little secret about as well. One maybe of single-handedly creating a new golden age. I don't know. Something, something along those lines. So, okay. So uh, SIVA is a self-replicating, machine-manipulating uh, technology. Okay, um, cool, cool. That, uh, and this was contained in golden age vaults deep beneath the Cosmodrome, in some places similar to where we discovered Rasputin in uh, previous right. adventures in Destiny, right. uh, but not all Golden Tage technology is, is friendly or happy. Uh, in the wrong hands or under the wrong conditions, this stuff can be extremely dangerous. So it's true that a little bit of information can be dangerous. And just, this is not something you want to touch either. Yeah. So Keith, what, was, uh, what were some of the different considerations in terms of the art, art style? Because you're introducing a new design language here to show us what exactly is happening on Team Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Team Evil. Uh, Just, yeah. Well, so, I mean, Steve is this, this uh, really interesting opportunity to explore um, a whole new design and graphical language. Mm -hmm. um, we have elements of the organic. We have elements of the synthetic. And how they blend together and work into the environment and to the combatants. Is, uh, is really interesting uh, visual exploration. Yeah. And we're working with design to really sell these as, these are something new, they act differently, they, they infest the world and the enemies and all kinds of things completely differently. And the, really also the high contrast with the colors, the SIVA nodules to the organic stuff, yeah. it's, uh, it op opens up a lot of really interesting opportunities for us. Okay. The, I mean, the, the early concepts of SIVA were about like how it manipulated things and what it looked like when it did that. Mm -hmm. uh, once we realized we wanted to propagate it in the environments and tell that story through, uh, through the, the levels, um, Adam Williams, one of the world artists, actually uh, did many mock-ups of what this could look like as it consumed yeah. the uh, the space. So okay. uh, this is actually a product of both of those things, but Adam definitely had a big hand in what this looks like when it's cool on the environment. All right, we're going to move on. And uh, in order to move on appropriately in style, let's do this, guys. Oh, yeah. I'm spawning my Galar wing. Sh show me yours. Nice. Looking mean. Well, let me see. Is it still trick? Indeed it does. Yeah, Can I stick the landing? Indeed. Check this out. I mean, go off the, uh, if I can do it. Oh, I'm gonna yes. die. No, don't <laughs> die. Come on, don't die in your stream. Don't die in your stream. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Okay. No, I'm not dead. Can I make it back up? Look at this. I'm not supposed to be down here. This is dev tools. Dev tools at work. How did you get down there? I don't know. You need a rope? I sure do. <laughs> Hang on. I think I can get back up there. If you're watching at home, you will not be able to come down here during the actual game. I need something to kill me. Uh, here, I can help with that. Can you help with that? <laughs> no, I can't. Kill me! <laughs> can the Galar wing fly? Can you go to the uh, debug cam? I don't know. You know how to do that? can do it. Hang on. Yeah. Help us on the way. It. Help us on the way. So, uh, this is live. Why don't you guys uh, spawn oh, your yeah. Galar wings. All right. And uh, do some tricking. Do that trick we did yesterday where you, uh, where you 
do a sweet jump off the uh, cannon of the uh, spider. Oh yeah, tank well there. you got to line this one up perfectly here. Let's see if I can do this. Um, yeah. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't get the trick out. Man, this looks. All right, I'm back though. topside. So we're good to go again. Nice work, Keith. Nice shiny. Woo. And I am going to have to reinvert myself. Oh, fail. Okay. okay. Uh, we're good to go. So uh, let's take ourselves further through the space here. Uh, all right. Well. So. Yeah. Go ahead. I can see a lot of hints. Yes. You, know, you guys are you guys are dropping me clues about the devil splicers. Yeah. And uh, they're they're hacking apart the environment here. And uh, <clears throat> what's the idea there? Like, what's the what's the design goal when you're when you're changing the environment with these little clues well, here? Uh, well, the the intent here is that I mean, this is what we're driving right now is part of the uh, part of the campaign, and we're it's all about discovery. I mean, yeah. the players discovering what what is actually going on, and so. Uh, we wanted to tell that story as much as we could in the environment. Um, uh, it also is an opportunity to change up the environment as well, like we were talking about before in the breach. So we can cut things in half, we can, we can have things fall over, and just basically get a, a different encounter space where we, where we want. Mm -hmm. And to give me little clues to make me curious about what's going on here. Now we can see that the devil splicers who uh, rule the plague lands they're also here, so they've spilled over the borders. Let's see, are they uh, are they immune to a storm? No, indeed. So, my warlock <laughs> brothers and sisters, you are good to go in this new adventure. We can see they have no respect for the past, and uh, they've even opened some new gameplay spaces for us. All right, yeah. This you can see this big crack in the wall here. Or cut, if you will. Um, so, what would we find in here? Uh, well, let me. I'll, I'll go take a look. I know yeah. we're not supposed to go in there. Here, this is no, like my Han is, Solo moment. Yeah, this is your oh. Han Solo moment. <laughs> uh, okay, Deej, that was a, that was a bad idea. Let's get let's get out of let's here. Go this, yeah, let's this, go this way. By order of Commander yeah. Zavala, this is not going to look. Zone. Not going to look. So you can see the Devil Splicers are just teaming in there. We've got another Siva outbreak right here, but uh, we are not to explore this domain today. Uh, you can see the shanks are still hard at work, opening up uh, the geometry and uh, creating a new frontier for adventure. <laughs> and uh, this is where we'll send the Guardians on September 20th, okay. but not on this day. I felt that rumble. I think that's a sign to go. Yeah, is that? Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're going to get. We're going to. We are, gonna we are leaving. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to disengage, but uh, that will be some new places for the players to explore later on this fall. So now we are retracing our steps. If you're familiar with the Sephix Prime Strike, you followed this path right. before. Okay. But let's come through here and uh, let's see what's different. So rally to me, Guardians, and uh, lead the way. I think we should make Keith lead. Keith, you're on point. Uh, <laughs> you're on point, Bachman. Uh, all right. <laughs> so this is. Yeah, we got a lot of non-final lighting. Oh, going of course, on yeah. These hallway. are. Yeah. These um, are all a work in progress. Yep. And uh, while the steps that we just took. We're very much as we remember them. It doesn't take long for you to open up a new space for us to be able to play. So the Plague Lands isn't the only thing that's new in the Cosmodrome. We also have an opportunity to, hello, I don't oh, want any oh, of that. Oh. Get it, get Watch it. out, here get it comes. It. Saved your life. Like any good fire team does. Is the area secure? The area is not secure. I'll try going this way. No, I'm not. Are right, you guys going down the stairs? I'm taking the new way. No, we take the new way. Yeah, Let's take come the new on. way. Come on, we're guardians. We explore. I got an invisible guy. To, here we go. He's down. 
think that's right. So you're, you're doing all sorts of interesting things to change this up. You're caving in the roof. You're letting us carve new paths through the landscape. You with me? I'm going to let you all Yeah, leave. yeah, we're here. Like I said, like the, yeah, the World Art team has had a lot of fun um, crafting these spaces. Oh, yeah. Whoa. More invisible bad guys. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, they're all over the place. You got guys on your six. Thank you. Okay, let's press on through. Hey, what's up? What's up, new bad guy? Here you go. Get him, boys. So we've been in this space before. Uh, fighting Hive, fighting Wizards, fighting Fallen Captains. But there's a new sheriff in town. And they have all sorts of wonderful new toys. Uh. Stop. Just stop. Everybody stop it. I'm trying to lead a guided tour here. You're all being a bunch of jerks. Everybody just knock it off. There we go. I didn't say any names. I just said everybody stop. All right, that's better. I just need some peace and quiet. I'm trying to make a point here. Because check this out. How many times have we hacked this with our ghost? It's become hacked by something else now. So what am I seeing here? Uh, that looks Siva. That definitely right looks yeah, Siva. So that does not look friendly, whatever it is. So Siva is not just something that wrecks the landscape. Uh, it looks like it can coalesce into a form of intelligence. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't, it has still, it needs a, a mind to control it. Okay. Um, again, without getting too much into the surprises, but uh, it's, um, uh, it, it, it does the, the bidding, if you will. Okay, we're going to uh, press on. Oh, here we go. We got a bad servitor. I'm just there we go. He's not so bad anymore. Throwing out all over the place, Dee. Aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like... Nothing said. So, do the Siva have an ally? Is there... Does uh, Siva have an ally? Does Siva have an ally? Like, do different factions of Fallen fight each other? Uh, do, uh, you know, the Devil Splicers have anyone that they're peaceful with? Or do they just want to consume everything? That's a good question. I think uh, you should ask Keith that question. <laughs> Keith, you're on the spot. You're in the oh, hot seat, oh, Keith. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, here we go. Um, I'm used to seeing Hive in this space. Right. So I mean, if, the double uh, splicers yeah. are, uh, they're against everybody. They're their own thing. They're out to take over everything. And yeah. they're starting with the Kaza drone and Siva. And they're incredibly invasive. And uh, at least when I play, pretty darn difficult. See, I cleaned that up nicely, right? You did. That, that was great. You did indeed. We've called the, the splicers many things in, internally. So. When we've encountered Hive in a lot of these different spaces, and uh, they have completely, the devil splicers have come in and made this their own spot now. Yeah, they've pushed oh, yeah. the Hive around uh, to where the Hive are now. Um, you're going to find the Hive in places you never saw them before because they don't, they don't feel safe. Good. They've been displaced from yeah. their, uh, They've been displaced from their territory, from the places okay. where they like to hide. Please keep me alive. Please help me, help me, help oh my me. God, look at that. Keep me safe. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is bad. There's an interesting visual design difference here, Keith, that I'd like to call out where we fought the Fallen. Uh, the Fallen shoot at you, their weapons are very distinctive. But uh, when you see the uh, Fallen Captain profile, and that fallen captain has become a devil splicer, mm. it's uh, pretty immediately apparent, right? Yes, I mean, not only have they started to use, oh, wait, I don't know, are we even allowed to do I don't know, if, if, if you don't, if you don't think mean, we are, don't say it. No, I mean, not only how are they using This is Siva, where you make me talk about it. So. I know, right? Uh, not only using Siva for the environment and all their evil ends, they're starting to modify themselves with it. And yes. that's given them some rather unique abilities. And we, and just even if, if they're right. shooting these red lasers at you, that's immediately a visual cue to tell you that you're not fighting the enemies that you've known in the past. No, and they've got a lot of tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, you've probably already seen it. You've noticed a couple of, uh, of little 
uh, seekers seeking after you after yeah. you kill guys and yeah. things like that. So, Siva's got some new tricks. And uh, even the servitors are in on the action. Yeah, absolutely. That's just not fair, man. Look at this. He, his, his, the rounds after he yeah. fires them are even adapting to my movements. So these guys are not. Where is he? I'll come if, help you. Have, if you have a playbook for fighting the fallen, it's time for some rewrites. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, this is, uh, these are not the only environments that you've changed surrounding the Plague Lands. And we've seen one of the entrances into the new spaces that we are going to explore. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying, like I was saying before, I mean, we, we wanted to spend most of our time on all the new, on all the new spaces. Um, and, uh, and so being able to, to craft new experiences in these old spaces um, was, uh, definitely a goal, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, it's uh, you know I can't wait till people get to see what's behind that, yeah. what's behind that crack in the wall. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not everything. So this th this is not the only uh, area in the Cosmodrome that you've repurposed or redesigned for Rise of Iron. Uh, this is just a taste. These are yeah. a few of the spaces that you'll go into, um, but we want to leave things for the players to discover. Uh, this is the uh, the fine line that we straddle when we're uh, introducing you to a new adventure is we want to pique your curiosity. We want to show you some of the things that you're going to get to do, but we want to leave these things for you to discover on your own. Uh, so it's been fun to come in here and to show you the way the Cosmodrome has changed and maybe set you to thinking what's the Plague Lands going to be like? Because as macabre as this is and as different as this is and as much as the fallen Devil Splicers have made this environment a lot more dangerous, the Plague Lands are much, 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 much worse, game. right? Yes. So I think we're going to stop our exploration here. Oh, we don't get to go through that? No, nope, we're not going to go through that. Uh, I need to leave things for the players to do. <laughs> uh, they want me to show them everything today. Uh, but if I did that and then the game came out and they said I saw all this on the stream, then uh, I'd be doing them a great disservice. Maybe so, we should take a vote. Online yeah, vote. Well, we're going to take a vote. Should we? Should we? <laughs> we'll ask the chat room. Are we going to press on, or should we leave it here and leave the rest for you to discover? Um, but no, in all sincerity, in all sincerity, um, this is what we wanted to accomplish today. We wanted to show you the Galler Wing Sparrow. Uh, we wanted to introduce you to the areas surrounding the Plague Lands in the Cosmodrome that you know, and uh, you've had your first glimpse of combat. Uh, against the fallen devil splicers. Perhaps you can do a better job with you and your fire team. That's why you complete us. Uh, <laughs> but it's been uh, fun to build these things. Uh, I personally think that uh, Rise of Iron is an amazing set piece for uh, the world of destiny, and I can't wait to follow Lord Saladin into battle. I'm actually going to do that tonight in uh, Iron yes. Banner. All right. So uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, joining us on stream, uh, especially you, Keith, since uh, you got about 20 minutes forewarning. Well, thanks for you having great. me. Great, yeah. yeah, it was, it was fun. Uh, and uh, Steve Cotton, thank you. What uh, what should we do next? What should we do next? Uh, yeah. What should we do next in terms of talking about Rise of Iron with the community? Should we Ooh. go to? You want to go to Gamescom? Uh, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, let's go to Gamescom and talk about it there. We can, yeah, you got you got your passport. What in order? can I? Uh, oh, I need a passport. You uh, do need a passport. Yeah, I think I have one. Okay. <laughs> I've been there before. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? No, nada. No, nada. <laughs> yeah, nada. <laughs> clearly. Quite clearly. Um, so uh, <laughs> our next move is going to Apologies. be, we're going to go to Germany uh, in mid-August. We will be at Gamescom. We're going to recreate this setting, something similar to this, and we're going to have another reveal stream at Gamescom in which we talk about the Crucible. Ooh. Ooh. So you and Lars Another Bakken, one dear to my heart. Yes, exactly. Uh, that was where I, as the longtime Bungie fan, that's where I first became aware of you personally, creating some of the uh, multiplayer maps where me and my old buddies would, uh, you know, fight for glory and honor against well, other people in the community. All right. Well, so uh, we're going to... Well, we got uh, something special in store for yeah, Gamescom. So. We're looking forward to Gamescom. Mm. We're going to unveil uh, some new maps. We're going to unveil a new combat mode and uh, some other features. And... Uh, we're going to uh, do that on a live stream. And then throughout the course of the week, we're going to use that same, same setting to invite people in from the community to tell their own story uh, in their own language. Uh, you know, Destiny is a global community. Gamescom is a great opportunity to do that. So some people that you know and follow uh, will be on that set talking about what we bring with us to Gamescom so that you can hear about it 
from their own point of view. That's always a crucial part of the way we talk about the things that we create is to uh, see it through your eyes and, and hear about it from you in your own voice. So uh, gentlemen, one more time, Steve Cotton, Keith Bachman, uh, these are the guys who make the games that you play and we thank you for playing them. So uh, I'm Deej from Bungie and uh, we will see you in the tower and uh, eventually on a long enough timeline, we'll see you at the top of Fell Winter Peak. Thank you so much for watching today, and uh, that's the end of our show. Uh, one more time before we leave, let's watch that Galar oh, yeah. Wing trailer <laughs> just it. one more time. Thanks so much for watching. Destiny Rise of Iron and get the Iron Gallahorn and Iron Gallowing Sparrow.